is your sales process more like a hockey game or more like ballet? Hi, my name is Bernie Heine, and today I want to talk about 12 intriguing principles around selling. So what do I mean about hockey and ballet? Well, you know, a hockey game, while fundamentals are important and people learn to do all the different moves, the game itself is very random. The puck can go in any second in any different direction. And people are always moving, manipulating, trying to get, trying to get the process under control and make it work for them. And there's just quick seconds where it works and then it's over again and then they're trying to regroup. Ballet is a scripted, choreographed, flowing movement of organized people. So when you think about your sales process, is it more like a hockey game or is it more like ballet? And we think that it makes more sense to be focused on a, the ballet version, to be organized in a, with a process where you know and your prospect knows where you are at all times. The worst thing that happens in a sales process is when the prospect and the salesperson are completely out of sync. This mutual mystification where we think it's pretty much closed and the prospect doesn't ever want to talk to you again. And this happens time and again. So having a process that you fall back on where you know where you are is very helpful. So I use the client builder selling process, which is what I teach uh, to my clients. And I don't want to talk about the individual steps of the process today, but I want to talk about these principles that underlie the process. So principle number one is you must believe in what you sell. Your prospects will never be as convinced about your products as you are. You have to really believe that what you sell is a good product and that as a salesperson it's your duty to the world to bring out these products to be able to help other people. And principle number two is keep the focus on your prospects at all times. This is not a show about you and how brilliant you are and how much interesting information you can deliver in a short period of time. It's about the prospect. You get there by asking questions and showing genuine interest in who they are as a person and what the concerns are of their business. And the mindset that we have is I'm financially independent and I don't need the business. People can sense when you're desperate and you're trying to push your stuff on people. Take the other road, which is I'm happy to do business with you if you want me to, but I don't need the business. It's not being arrogant. It's being thoughtful of who they are and where they're coming from. And principle number three is the better you are at prospecting, the better you will be at selling. So prospecting is that connection between marketing, which gets people to be interested in your products and know about your products, and sales, which is closing the deal, making the business happen. Prospecting is that connecting piece. So the better you are at reaching out to people, understanding people's needs, analyzing the marketplace, all those factors will make you much better at selling. Principle number four is seek to be trusted and not to be liked. Oftentimes you hear people talk about no like and trust. Well, first I have to get to know you, and then I will like you, and then eventually I'll trust you, and then we can do business. Well, the liking is actually only important for a certain sector of the population. So I use the DISC model, and those would be the eyes. They really need to like you, so they're extroverted, they're people people, they need to like you in order to do business. But for the rest of the population, it's not that important. What's really important is that they trust you. And people will do business with people that they trust, but they might not want to have them as friends. They might not like them in particular, but they trust them. They know this person gets it done. This company does what they say they're going to do. This organization follows up. That's trust. And that's what we need to seek not just being friends with people. Principle number five is collaboration, not competition, is the best mindset. 
I want to collaborate with my prospects. I want to create a business relationship that works both ways, a win-win. If I'm competing against my client, I'm looking for a win-lose. I win, you lose. I get lots of money, you get a little tiny product. That's not the right mindset for selling. I have to think it's cooperation. I want to get a win-win. I want you to be very happy with your products and I want to get paid for that. And we want to work together to get there. I'm not fighting each other for airtime or fighting each other for, for, uh, for profitability. It should work in a cooperative way. Principle number six is people buy emotionally and then they rationalize intellectually. So we make decisions with the center of our brain. It's the part that doesn't even understand language. We need to be emotionally connected in order to make a decision. You know, oftentimes you'll hear people talk about a gut feel. Well, I just didn't really feel good about that. Well, no matter what the numbers say, if we don't have a mutual feeling of trust, we're not going to close a deal. You're not going to buy from me if you don't trust me. And that's not a rational thing. That's an emotional thing. You have to feel emotionally good about this is where we're going. And principle number seven is very related to that. People only buy when they have pain. People have to have pain or there's no sale. We as salespeople have to tease out what are those pain points? What are the things that are really bothering people that our solutions can alleviate? And principle number eight is we need to use a system for selling and prospecting. So you can't just randomly walk in and change it each time. How can you ever get better if you don't have a good process? So we need a process, we need a system, we need to have something that we're following that we can also share with our prospects so that we stay on the same page at the same time. And principle number nine is we can't convince anybody of anything. People have to convince themselves that your solutions are the right ones for them. When we force people to do stuff against their sort of better judgment and we trick them into some sale, it's not a lasting relationship. Sure, maybe you'll close one deal, but you're not gonna build a pipeline of, of valuable customers and prospects if that's your mindset. So they have to convince themselves. They have to know, yes, this is the right thing. Let me buy your product. And principle number 10 goes very much along with that, which is it's a, sales is a process of disqualification. We start with a wide set of potential prospects, suspects, people that might be interested, and we narrow it and narrow it and narrow it. And we need to constantly be looking for ways to make the list smaller so that we can focus a lot of our energy on the high quality leads. And we shouldn't worry when people are not immediately interested in buying because we can't sell to everybody. We have to narrow the focus so we can do a really good job with the ones that really need our products. And along with that, principle number 11 is give your prospects the freedom to say no. Show them the exit doors. Don't force them to stay in. That's what they want to hear. Prospects are often afraid that the salesperson won't give up. They're gonna have rehearsed stalls and objections and they're gonna know what to say. When I say this, they'll say that. When I go here, they'll go there and try to force me into a corner. So that's why they often say, oh, I have to think it over. No, I don't like to end a, end a discussion with we have to think things over. I want clear plans. And if it's a no, tell me right now in my face, I can handle it. Don't give me the, well, I gotta think this over when really you mean no, I never wanna do business with you. That's fine, just tell me so that we don't let this stumble along and we're talking around each other. We don't have it. We need to be on the same page. And finally, principle 12 is give yourself permission to fail. You'll make mistakes. It's fine. We learn from our mistakes and we move forward. Maybe you'll say some of the wrong things and, and you'll lose a sale. Well, that happens in life. We don't close every single thing we start. So give yourself permission to fail so that you're giving yourself permission to experiment and try new things. And I encourage you to try on these 12 principles of selling.